Welcome back Guardians. Season of the Wish has begun and our mission for the next few months is to secure Riven's clutch of eggs in exchange for a wish with Riven to follow the witness. Simple enough if it wasn't for the fact that most of them are currently missing. Week 1 of Season of the Wish hinted at this being a bit odd, but week 2 of this season really questioned the player who stole the eggs. Riven believes that Mara stole and hid the eggs to strengthen her bargaining potential, but if you're anything like me, this is just too obvious, and I doubt Bungie would just say it openly in the week 2 opener. So today I want to talk about the disappearance of these eggs from Riven's lair and who might be responsible. But before starting, this video is sponsored by Ridge. Get up to 30% off using my link ridge.com slash mylan through to December 20th. You definitely have seen the Ridge wallet and the Ridge key case on this channel before, but did you know the Ridge also makes rings? They come in a variety of premium materials just like the Ridge wallets, including carbon fiber, tungsten, carbide, 24 karat gold, and titanium. The outside edge is beveled with the inside convex shape, making it comfortable with a no pinch fit. The great thing is you also get a silicon ring with each purchase, which is perfect for those who have jobs or hobbies where you couldn't normally wear a ring. Say for example, if you go to the gym a lot. And talking about the gym, if you happen to lose a lot of weight and your ring stops fitting correctly, or you get those chunky rock climbing fingers, you can get two future exchanges for a different size. Or if you just happen to lose your ring, Ridge will also give you a replacement in the same size. The Ridge rings are truly risk free and if you just end up not liking them, you can send them back within 99 days for a full refund. So to see why Ridge has over 3 million customers with over 50,000 5 star reviews, shop the holiday sale by going to ridge.com slash mylan to get up to 30% off through December 20th. Just by using my link, you also get a chance to win a Ridge bundle worth $4,000 without spending a cent. To start with, let's briefly go over what we know happened with Riven's Clutch. After we agreed to retrieve her eggs in return for granting Sabathun's wish, the Ahamkara sent us into her lair where she believed they were being kept. But it turns out that at some point in the past, we're not sure how recently, the eggs vanished from her lair and became lost in the Leyline network. At this point, I'm sure some of you are understandably asking what the hell is a ley line? Ley lines were introduced to us in Season of the Lost just before the Witch Queen expansion. We don't have a detailed description of what they are, but they are essentially a sort of sprawling web of interdimensional tunnels that connect to our reality and the Ascendant Plane. Have a listen to Petra explaining them to Saint-14 in the Shattered Realm activity. This place is a maze. Which is why we establish guides. Lanterns. Beacons. Geppetto tells me these are, uh, nodes, and that they are connected. Yes, by ley lines. They're like primordial currents you can navigate between worlds. I see. Places share memories, have relationships. Just like us, they have seen so much. Something like that. Think of them kind of like a subway system for the universe, allowing rapid travel for those who know how to access them. Fortunately for us, the Awoken are very familiar with the Ley Lines, having used them for their own purposes for potentially hundreds of years. So they have all the knowledge and tools we need to retrieve Riven's eggs, most notably the Blind Well, which acts as a gateway into the Ley Line network. So we know roughly where the eggs are, but how did they get there? Ahamkara are innately paracausal, so there's always a possibility that they hopped into the ley lines all by themselves, accidentally or perhaps as a defensive mechanism when the lair was invaded. However, Riven thinks this is very unlikely and that someone has intentionally scattered them. While Riven suspects Mara, there are a couple other options. It would be easy to assume that this is the work of the Witness, as so far this season we've been fighting its forces every step of the way. And this does make some sense, if Riven doesn't grant our wish, then we can't follow the Witness into the Traveller and put a stop to whatever it's up to. But in order to interfere in our plans, it would have to know what we're doing in the first place, and according to Osiris, it may well not. Have a listen to this season's Veil Containment Log. I've reached the extent of what I can glean from the research data. What have we got? Less than I've hoped for. But the last of Chioma Essie's research has led me to an intriguing topic. Ghosts. Ghosts? As far as I know, Neomuna never had any contact with a ghost before you all showed up. We knew about them, but... Precisely. 
Chioma Essi was researching the entanglement of light and dark without fully understanding either. Our ghosts are a link to the light of the Traveler. Then how was the witness able to, on numerous occasions, communicate through them? Is this about the, uh, the magnets thing? The, the parallel energy fields, right? Very good. In areas of darkness, the witness is able to create a link. Not unlike what it created with the Veil and the Traveler. Ah, like the Vex are able to hack into the Cloud Arc with their tech. It's a parallel connection. And I believe that connection may not be one-sided. I believe that our ghosts may be able to leverage this connection against it. Turn the enemy's weapon against them. Well, that sounds great. But how? That, I do not know. But what I do know is that while the witness is out of our reach, it is also out of the reach of our ghosts. Which means whatever lies beyond that portal, whatever is inside the Traveler, has left the witness blind to our actions. And given us an opportunity to make a plan without it knowing. Precisely. The witness has played all the pieces it can. This is its final act, win or lose. Whatever we do from here determines the fate of everything. <laughs> no pressure. This is reinforced by Marasov in the first week of the seasonal story. While seeking one of Riven's eggs, we came across a Vex Hydra from the Soul Divisive, a faction of Vex that worship darkness and serve the Witness. Mara deduces that the Hydra is acting as the Witness's eyes and ears, and that if we destroy it, the Witness may be unable to discover what we're up to. Now, the Witness is incredibly intelligent and may have already figured things out, but it's worth noting that our current plan was also devised by Savathun, someone we know has previously outsmarted the Witness. There are also a couple other hints that suggest the Witness did not scatter the eggs, but rather is just looking for the eggs just like us. Petra says in our first delve into Riven's lair, we're not the only ones after these things. In the first week's story, we fight a Vex Hydra from the Soul Divisive, a Hydra named the Aspirational Construct. Aspirational means to have wants, to desire something. In other words, it could be the Soul Divisive built a Vex that is designed to make wishes. And since they directly serve the Witness, we can assume this means that the Witness wants to make a wish. As for what that wish is, that's not so clear. Perhaps it needs help with whatever it's doing inside the Traveler, but that's pure speculation. Regardless, I'm pretty comfortable in saying that the Witness didn't steal or hide the eggs in the Ley Lines, even though they may pursue them. So who took the eggs? There's one very likely candidate that some of you probably suspected before even watching this video. A group that has both an interest in the Ahamkara and an intimate knowledge of the Ley Lines. The Nine. The motivations of the Nine are rather complex, but the gist is that their existence is tied to life and soul. If we die, so do they. So for the longest time, they've been seeking a way to escape this bond and become fully independent. Before the Ahamkara were wiped out in the Great Hunt, the Nine were attempting this via wishes, trying to become corporeal beings. But of course, like most wishes, it didn't turn out the way they wanted. There is a very cryptic lore entry that implies the Nine made a wish and it backfired. Have a listen to Zer's explanation of this in the Red Box lore entry. It reads, We salvaged information from a ghost on Venus in the Ishtar Sink. It described an artifact found by our Golden Age ancestors. A copper box, painted red, lightly damaged, full of dust. On the individual motes of dust, we found engraved maps of rocky worlds, Mars, Earth, Venus, other planets, maybe every Earth-like planet in the galaxy. My colleagues say the artifact came from the Vex, as a warning that they will exist wherever we go. But I think, she swallows, I think it's from the Nine. Did the box of dust come from the Nine, Zer? Zer's golden eyes shine at her. I'm here for a reason, he says. I cannot remember. The dust has changed. The dust is precious. Yes, did the Nine send us the dust? Why is dust precious, Zer? Why dust at all? Why not a letter or a clay tablet or anything clear? Blood, Zer says, and makes a sound like a cough. The blood is transformed. The wish is granted. The dust is commingled. Much of dust was once cells, Zer says, and coughs loudly. This dust was once of the Nine. It commingled. 
it was forever changed. That harsh percussive cough again, dust to dust, one dust to another, the nine are the flesh of dust. Despite failing to achieve their goals, the nine appear to have grown very fond of the Ahamkara, some even calling them their children. But also remember the nine also wiped out some of the Ahamkara out of fear of them being taken by Oryx. Either way, the Nine have a history of being involved with the Ahamkara, and the appearance of Ahamkara eggs may have reignited their original goal of using Dragon Wishes to enter our reality. The Nine are also one of the few factions we know that possess the ability to perform such a heist in the first place. The eggs were scattered across the ley lines, and according to Marasov, the Nine know more about these lines than anyone else. Have a listen to this dialogue from the Astral Alignment Activity. Are the ley lines natural phenomena, or something the Awoken created? They're naturally occurring paracausal forces that predate the Awoken. The only entities that might know their true origin and makeup are the Nine. But I don't think they're telling. So the Nine have both the motive and the means to steal Riven's clutch, and personally I think they are my number one suspect. But now I want to go full speculation theorycraft mode, as far as we're aware, the Nine are currently split into two factions that disagree about how to achieve their ultimate goal. One faction, consisting of five members, is obsessing over paracausality, whereas the other four have turned their focus to experimenting with dark matter. Have a listen to the lore entry, The Witch. It reads, Came now the Traveller, and with it a strange hope, for the Traveller's light had the power to cause without causation. If the Nine had the light, they could seed their own minds, free themselves from their dependence on matter life. They could gain forces beyond gravity to structure themselves, and so become more than wraiths of dark dust. They could enter the mad alien superworld of our chemical reality. So they turned to this new hope, and were divided. Because there are factions among the Nine, one faction sent Zer and Orin to study Guardians and the Light, to seek the secret of effect without cause, and to protect the source of that secret, the last source, now that the Ahamkara are gone. Those five played at alchemy with the Cassatus Gates, turning dark dust into energy and then into matter, but they could not unlock the secrets of our mad existence. They needed ambassadors, go-betweens. The other faction walks a different path, a path of folds and needles slipped through space-time itself, existential syringes yielding new spaces to be remade as a nine desire. They have tried to gather enough dark dust in one place to form a black hole and found it difficult. When the dark mass collapses in gravity's fist, the dust passes through itself and scatters. But difficult is not impossible and there is far, far more dark matter in the universe than bright. They will find a way to make new worlds of it. They will end their dependence on life and on the light of guardians, which the falling veil will soon snuff out forever. So rather than the Nine being interested in the Ahamkara, it's possible that it's just this one faction, five of them. At first this may not seem particularly relevant, but if we take a look at the Season of the Wish logo, surrounding their main symbol are five distinct orbs. Coincidence? I'll leave that for you to decide. I told you this was full speculation mode, but I do think it's interesting to acknowledge there are different factions within the Nine, and that five of them are probably at more interest in Ahamkara eggs than the other. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you leave the words of the Nine. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.